नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन फोर इन अवर कोर्स ऑन ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट एज वी हैव सीन इन सेशन वन वी हैव कवर्ड द टॉपिक्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन दिस कोर्स वी हैव ऑल्सो सीन द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द कोर्स वी हैव सीन दैट दिस कोर्स इज अ थर्टी आर कोर्स इन विच देर विल बी ट्वेल्व वीक्स ऑफ डिस्कशन Each week we'll have half an hour sessions, five sessions of half an hour each. In session two, we have covered the basic objectives. Be prior to that, we have seen the definitions of the word operations management, and then we have seen what are the objectives of studying this course, or what are the objectives of this process of operations management. in session 3 if you remember we have covered what are the functions of the operations management personnel or what are the overall defined areas of working of operations management team we have seen that for any organization there are three broad verticals one is related to finance another is related to operations another is related to the marketing so our focus primarily is on operations then we have seen that what are the important areas or scope of operations of this subject we have seen that starting from demand of the product to the design of the product then to the production planning production control material handling system materials management inventory control work system design capacity planning aggregate production planning there is a wide scope of this subject that is operations management so we have seen that the scope is very wide but sometimes we have to classify the scope so that we are able to understand the overall framework of the subject somebody may ask a very simple question or a layman's question that what all do you study in operations management you need to have a very structured answer to this question that we have covered these important topics in this course so we need to have a structured answer the structured answer can be that starting from the conceptualization of the product to the launch of the product in the market how it is getting transformed into the final product managing the product development cycle is overall we can say the broad umbrella under which all other sub systems can fall in so we are starting from the conceptualization of the product then designing the product then forecasting that how much volume of product would be demanded in the market or what is the demand of that product then planning our facilities planning the production processes and then planning the man power who are going to convert the raw material into the product then managing our capacity then doing the production control finally evaluating the quality warehousing and finally the product is launched into the market so managing all production operations usually we can say will fall under the overall umbrella the umbrella we can call as the operations management so we have seen that it can maybe overall management of the production system that it is a sub system of the broader manufacturing system so we are here managing the operations part of any manufacturing industry we are not directly dealing with the finance we are not directly dealing with the marketing we are directly dealing with the operations part of the organization so we have seen that within operations part also there are so many sub components or sub elements or sub parts that we that we can discuss or that fall under the scope of operations management or that fall under the overall umbrella of operations management so sub topics we have seen and i think each one of them we are going to address in this course we are going to study product design and development we are going to study sales forecasting we are going to study plant layout 
and facility location planning we are going to study aggregate production planning we are going to study capacity planning we are going to study materials management so each and everything that falls under the scope of operations management will be covered and in summary we can say conversion of raw material into the final product managing the overall transformation process right from the raw material to the final product will be the scope of our study in this course. But in order to remember what is the overall broad framework where we can focus our efforts or focus our activities, we can club them into 5 P's and those 5 P's I am very quickly going to highlight today and then we will focus our attention on these 5 P's in context of the production system that how we can classify the production system. There can be we can say different types of manufacturing activity happening in an organization and how we can classify them that we will try to understand today. So, let us quickly first see the operations management framework is divided into 5 P's. Now, what are these 5 P's? What are the focus areas we can say we have to focus on the product we have to focus on the plant, we have to focus on the program in context of the time, we have to focus on the processes, we have to focus on the people. So, these 5 P's we have to manage in the overall framework of operations management in order to meet our objectives. What are the objectives? To produce a product which is of right quality in right quantity at right time within a reasonable cost so or within an acceptable cost so that is what is our objective these are the five things on which we can focus so as we have seen four words we can remember regarding the overall objectives of operations management that is qqtc that is quality quantity time and cost similarly what we need to control in order to get all these 5 things, we need to focus on these 5 P's that is product, plant, program, processes and people. So, let us quickly see each one of these product, it is linked between production and it is a link between production and marketing. So, marketing team will assess the needs and requirement of the market the needs and requirements of the customers and then they will try to link it with manufacturing. So, once we have to see that what we want to produce, so that we will cover in our week on product design and development. We will try to see some of the tools and techniques which can help us to make a successful product. R firstly, designing the product and then finally, converting that product into a tangible product after rapid prototyping or after prototyping. So, a product must have performance, quality and reliability, aesthetics and ergonomics, quantity and selling price, delivery schedule. So, these are the important we can say criteria related to a good product that good product will be having good performance, quality, reliability, cost justification, it should be able to satisfy the human needs and requirements at the defined time. So, delivery schedule is important, quantity is important, selling price is important. So, first and foremost is the product. So, we have to focus on product design and then we have to see all aspects related to the product in our overall management of the operations. Then the plant. The plant accounts for major investment. If you have studied uh, the analysis or the financial analysis, you will see there will be some fixed assets, there will be direct cost, there will be indirect cost and accordingly we calculate the break even for the organization. So, the plant accounts for the major investment. The plant is concerned with design and layout of buildings and offices, reliability and maintenance of equipment, safety of operations. So, we can see that whenever we are thinking of the plant, 
we have to take into account all these things that the operations must be safe, operations must be maintenance free or we may require the least or minimum maintenance then the layout should be such that we have optimal utilization of the floor space. So all these points have to be taken into account. So plant layout and facility location design is also very very important. So plant layout must allow smooth movement of men and materials that is also one of the objectives of plant layout. Then type of layout depend is dependent on production type, volume of demand etc. So, we will see today the types of production system, there are intermittent type of production system, there are continuous type of production system. So, the type of layout will depend upon the type of production system, the volume of demand for example, we require very high you can say production rate or the demand is continuous we have to supply the product at a very fast pace that will dictate or have a bearing on the type of layout that we are planning for the operations. So, first thing we have seen that we have to focus on product, then we have to focus on the plant that is going to convert that raw material into the product form or is going to facilitate the transformation process of the raw material so that we get a good quality product. So, two things are product and then plant where the transformation will take place. So, here we have seen that what are important criteria when on which we can say whether the plant or the facility design is good or bad. If it is making optimal utilization of resources, it is ensuring smooth movement of men and material, it is minimizing the wastage of time and effort, we can say that yes, it is a good plant design. So, we can see where we have to focus our energy, we have to focus our energy on product design and development, we have to focus our energy on facilities location and layout design, then we have to focus our energy on process or the transformation process that is converting the raw material into the final product. So, the methods used to create a product or transform the raw materials into the product form. Now, selection of a particular process depends upon the following factors. We have to take into account the available capacity. So, our capacity planning comes into picture, manpower skills available. So, people comes into picture, type of production system, layout of plant, it is related to the previous section, previous point that we have discussed that is plant layout and facility location, safety, maintenance required, manufacturing cost involved. So, we have to focus on all these factors to come out with a solution that which is the most efficient and effective process for our you can say requirement or for our target. Our target is of quality and quantity of the final product. So, as per our requirement which process will give us the desired output. So, we have to take a decision based on all these factors that is capacity, manpower, skills, type of production system, layout of a plan, then safety of the operations, maintenance of the operations, manufacturing cost. We can see this list can be endless, there can be other criteria and parameters also which will affect the selection of the process for the transformation or the transformation process for finally creating our product. Creating a product means making a product or fabricating a product or manufacturing a product or producing a product. So, basically we have to see that which transformation process will be most effective and efficient. So, we have seen three things, we have to focus on the product, we have to focus on the plant, we have to focus on the process, then we have to focus on the program. We have to see that how, in what time space or in what time frame we have to create our product. So, program refers to the timetable of production, very easy. In your classes or wherever you are working, you have a timetable. 
you have a time when you are going to enter into the office there may be a time when you have to leave your office so program refers to the timetable so it can it prepares the schedule for purchasing so we have to get the raw material transforming we have to see which processes are involved in the creation of the product or manufacturing of the product we have to see which machines have to be meant have to go under regular maintenance at what intervals of time we have to see the manage of cash flow we have to see the storage or management of cash flow we have to manage and then storage and transport so time domain is also very very import important and therefore we have to manage the overall manufacturing program in such a way that our delivery schedules are met finally the most important part that is the people so people are a part of a organization progress of organization depends on attitude and skills of the working people so we have to ensure that we are providing an environment to our workers where they can feel comfortable and motivated to work for the objectives of the organization or work for achieving the targets set by the organization so we have to ensure the overall well being of our human resource we not only the physical well being but also the mental well being of our workforce or the human resource because once our workforce is motivated they will work out wonders for the organization so we have to focus on people also so the concepts of work system design concepts of the design of a system in such a way that the worker feels comfortable and motivated to work for the organization that is also coming under the overall framework of operations management so the job satisfaction of people depends upon good match between the people and the jobs and therefore the concept of ergonomic design of workplaces is very very important and we will cover the concept of ergonomics in our course on product design and development that when we are designing a product we must Con consider the aspect of ergonomics that the product is so designed that it is easy for an operator or a customer or a user to use that product similar concepts can be applied in work system design also that the person when he is performing his task or job or activity in an organization he must be able to do it in the most effective manner with minimum Uh, fatigue and minimum discomfort so he must be able to comfortably do his job in the organization so we have to ensure that the jobs match with the people people also enjoy doing their work so it is possible by providing them right motivation right kind of training then conditions of work and safety must be ensured and proper wages and salaries so if the employee is motivated he feels like coming to the company because the environment is congenial for doing the job he is properly trained to do his task and he is getting adequate salary matching with his skills and the amount of work he is doing i don't believe that or i don't feel that any worker will have any problem working for an organization so if we focus on these five p's uh, starting from the product then the plant then we can see the process the program and lastly the people if we focus on all five peace in the overall framework of an organization if we manage these five peas properly we will be able to achieve the objectives of operations management so the overall scope of operations management must focus on these five peas in order to be successful so or in order to ensure the success of an organization so now we will try to see that what are the different types of production systems currently we have focused i think all learners must be now acquainted well with why we are studying this subject where we have to focus our attention what are the areas of concern what are the factors that we need to look forward to when we are managing the different aspects of operations now we will see what are the types of systems and 
what are the th uh, we may be important characteristics related to these systems and how the things vary in context of these five P's. For example, if we have to, uh, basically we will see there are two types of production systems, intermittent type of production system and a continuous type of production system. So, we will see in context of people how the two systems vary. In case of intermittent, the product design may keep on changing from time to time. Today we are producing a specific design of a product, but there may be a change in order and the complete redesign of the product may be required or there may be a new order in which we have to manufacture a completely new design. What type of skills are required for the people? I think you can answer it very quickly when the product design is changing on a regular basis or at a regular intervals of time. We require a person or we require people who can adapt to these type of changes. They have a versatile skill set. Whereas on, a, on the other side, if there is a continuous type of production, there is a regular demand and we are producing same product maybe for 3 years or 5 years, what type of skills are required? Specialized skill of a person because he has to do the same task on a regular basis. So, we do not require a versatile skill set for a person who is working on a specific operation in a continuous type of production system. So, similarly the time that is the program, the plant layout, the processes used, the product that we are producing all these 5 P's the product, plant, process, program and people all these five are related to the types of production system or they are interrelated because we will see that when we see the type of production system and the characteristics of each one of these production systems, we will see that they are directly related to these five P's and in that production system how these five P's have to be managed that is where the engineering skill will come into picture. So, let us quickly go to the topic of production production systems. Now, production system just for definition, it is a manufacturing subsystem. So, we can say manufacturing is on a broader perspective, production is a subset we can say or a subsystem of the overall manufacturing activity. So, manufacturing subsystem that includes all functions required to design, produce, distribute and service a manufactured product. So, you can see starting from product design to the act of creating that product or producing that product or fabricating that product or manufacturing that product. So, starting from the design of the product to the production of the product to the distribution of the product and finally, if there is some problem the service of the product comes under the overall production system. Elements are we have seen this diagram two three times that there are inputs into the system, then there are outputs from the system and there is a transformation happening to the inputs so that we get a usable or a tangible product in the output. So, input transportation uh, transformation sorry and the output are three elements of any production system. Now, what are the types of production system that can be grouped? in two categories broadly. So, there are intermittent type of production systems and there are continuous type of production systems. So, we can see type of production system broadly classified into two intermittent type of production systems and continuous type of production systems. Then sub classifications are there for intermittent type. What are sub classifications? Project, jobbing and batch. On continuous side we have sub classifications mass and process type of production flows. So, in many good books and in many uh, we can say websites you will find out three classifications uh, based on the type of activities involved or the characteristics involved. You will see job shop type of production system, batch type of production system and a mass or continuous type of production system. But here we are trying to further classify them into two broad categories that one is intermittent where the demand of the product is changing over a period of time and continuous is when there is a continuous production of the product. So, one simple example that I usually give for continuous type of production system is the production of power either by hydropower or by coal. 
coal based power projects. So, you see continuous production is there, once the production of power stops, there is a shutdown of power may be in certain number of cities or towns. So, that is a continuous type of production system, you have input may be water is coming, uh, flowing in the river, you make a dam, you stop a water and then use that water for producing the hydropower. So, that is continuous type of production system and intermittent can be a workshop that we have uh, a maybe in a market where a person has uh, maybe put up two machines and these machines are being used for on a job shop basis. You go there that I uh, need a threading on this part. So, what the person will do? He will mount that component on the machine, make a thread on that component and hand it over to you. So, it is design changes are very frequent, your requirement goes to the person and then he is managing only that particular product for you, job shop type, maybe you are going for a specific job to that person. So, we, we can say we have seen the two extreme cases, continuous manufacturing and a product based manufacturing or a specific job based pro production system. So, basically intermittent is uh, where the demand is not continuous and uh, continuous production system is where continuously you are produced. So, we will very quickly try to understand the basic aspects. Now, intermittent production systems, intermittent means something that starts, maybe initiates and stops at regular or irregular intervals of time. So, we can say that intermittent is time to time production system. In the intermittent production system, goods are produced based on customers orders as I have told you, go to a shop and maybe tell that I need this particular product, I need threading here, I need turning here. So, a person who has a lathe machine will work on your specific order and uh, try to satisfy your requirement. Large varieties of products are produced, production of goods of acceptable quality. Now, you can see that the design can change, I may have a different requirement, uh, the other person may have a different requirement, so the product design changes are very, very frequent, so variety of products are produced in intermittent type of production systems. This, this system is very flexible because the demand is changing continuously, so as per the demand, the system will operate and produce the product. Now, what are the features? Now, you can try, this can be an assignment, try to match the 5 P's with these uh, characteristics. So, what are the features of intermittent production system? Very quickly, we can see flow of production is not continuous, variety of products are produced. So, you can see variety of products. So, focus is on products, the first P of the overall framework of operations management. Volume of production is small. So, it is related to the process. So, volume of production is small, general purpose machines are used because the designs are changing continuously. So, we cannot have a specific dedicated machines. So, we need to have a very, very versatile and general purpose machines. Sequence of operation changes as per design and production depends upon the customer's orders. So, we can see that it is a flexible type of system that is the intermittent type of production system. Now, continuous production system, we can see that in continuous means something that operates constantly. So, it is a continuous as I have taken an example of hydropower generation, it is a continuous process without any irregularities or frequent halts. Goods are produced continuously as per the demand forecast. Goods are produced on a large scale for stocking and selling. So, we can see that it is a continuous system, goods are produced on a continuous basis. So, goods are not produced on customer order. So, we can say, maybe we can take example of ready made garments also. Ready made garments are continuously produced by the company based on the marketing and based on the tastes and the fashion uh, prevailing in a particular time domain. So, it is not that if I will order then only the company will produce that shirt. So, it is not based on the customer order, continuous production is there. The inputs and outputs are standardized along with the production process and sequence. Again coming to the same example, 42 size, 40 size, 44 size shirts, so the output is standardized that they have to produce their pro product based on the standardized uh, we can say sizes in case of a uh, automatic uh, production of uh, garment manufacturing. So, the inputs and outputs are standardized along with the production process and sequence. So, the process is also standardized. 
there will be a dedicated department for cutting the uh, you can say cloth and then there can be stitching and then there can be finishing so we can say the inputs and outputs are standardized along with the production process as well as the sequence is also standardized now what are the features of a continuous production system so features of a continuous production system are flow of production is continuous and not intermittent products are standardized here in previous case product design is changing continuously here the products are standardized maybe one example of a continuous production system can be manufacturing of automobiles so once the design is fixed so you will continuously keep on producing that design or that particular what we say the variant of a particular model of car products are produced as per quality standards products are produced in anticipation of demand so we have a anticipation we have a forecast of the demand so that uh, accordingly we will uh, schedule our production standardized routing sheets and schedules are prepared so the process is more or less automatic the schedules are also produced automatically and we are able to meet our schedules because the, there are not many frequent design changes not many frequent process sequence changes so more or less we are able to meet our targets of time so you can see that there is a difference between the two types of production systems that is the intermittent type of production system so job shop and batch type of production systems will fall under the intermittent type of production system and continuous or mass type of production systems will fall under the continuous production system so broadly we can see the types of production systems can be classified into two broad categories that is intermittent type and the continuous type and we will see that depending upon the type of production system being adopted or being followed in a particular organization our operations management tools and techniques will vary or we have to adjust the operations management methodology specific to the specific type of production system being followed yes but the overall we can say objective of operations management will remain same to ensure the quantity quality in specified time at reasonable cost so overall objectives will remain same in spite of or in uh, we can say irrelevant to the type of production system being followed so we have a out we have objectives of the operations management that is clear to us now depending upon the type of production system being followed we will follow the principles of operations management and will try to manage both types of production systems whether it is intermittent type or it is continuous type so the learning or we can say the understanding or the development of knowledge or the know how related to the basic principles and rules and guidelines related to operations management will help us to manage both types of system the intermittent type of production systems also as well as the continuous type of production systems also so with this we close today's session we have tried to understand the overall framework of operations management where we need to focus our attention the five p's in the overall framework and then we have tried to broadly classify the types of production systems into intermittent type and the continuous type and we have tried to figure out what are the specific characteristics of the intermittent type of production system as as well as the continuous type of production system in our next session we will focus on the last session on this fundamental v, uh, fundamental discussion related to the operations management in our subsequent discussion we will focus on specific uh, maybe uh, areas or specific sessions or specific uh, we can say tools or techniques which will help us to manage our operations properly and in week 2 our focus will be on product design and development thank you